God, I, I know. But I can tell you one thing for certain. For the majority of the things in our lives, I am certain of God's will. And I say that with confidence to you all. And I know that if I say that wrongly, I will be judged by God for it. And I, and I will say it confidently again. I know God's will for us. For the majority of the things going on in our lives. And so, I want to tell you guys what God's will is not. Um, God's will is not the typical prayer of, um, what you? Faku, help me to know if I should take this job or not. Help me to know if I should marry this girl or not. Help me to know if this guy is the one for me. That's not God's will. Uh, I'm sorry to tell you that. And some of you are probably like, what? That's not God's will for me? To know that and to pray for those things? And I'm not saying if you've done that, that's terrible or you're a bad person. I'm just saying we've been misguided. We've been mistaught. And I, I believe that for so long. And let me tell you why that's not true. Because if it's true, it should happen. Right? So with my own personal life, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to share some background history of Sifu Nathan. When I was younger and I was in high school, I was in love with a girl. This, this is the school. <laughs> I was in love with a girl in high school. And I liked her a lot. We would talk, we would hang out, we would go play basketball together, we would go out to eat together, we would talk about any of our things in our lives. And we were good friends at church. She was a good believer, I was a good believer. Well, I'm not good, right? But we were believers. And one day I was like, I think I'm gonna pop the question. Because for me, as a young Nathan, I was like, for me to pop the question of, will you date me? Will we be boyfriend and girlfriend? Was the same thing as saying, I want to marry you. I want to pursue you until the ends of time, from marriage until death do us part. So I'm popping the question now. And so in order to know if that was true, I was praying with God. God, let me know if she's the woman that I should marry. Let me know if she's the one I have been dreaming of since I was a child watching the K-dramas as, as a young child, right? And I prayed and prayed and no answer. I read the Bible every day faithfully and no answer. I asked God again and again and no answer. And so I said, God, tonight I pray that you just reveal it to me the way you did with Moses in the burning bush. Just force it into my life. So I took this exact same Bible, I threw it in the air, and whatever way it landed, boom, boom, it opened up. And wherever it landed, I was like, God, that's your answer for me in my prayer. And I have that much faith in you. And so you know what showed up to me? Proverbs 18.22. If y'all don't know that passage, that's the passage you want to hear if you're trying to marry someone. Okay? How, how did I get to that one? Yes, it was the entirety of Proverbs 18, but I read it, and that was the one that matched with my life situation. So that's what I'm going with. Proverbs 18.22, it said this. He who finds a wife finds a treasure and finds favor in the Lord. And I was like, oh my goodness, I was about to cry. Like, God, you are so faithful. You have answered my, my questions and my longings in my life. Long story short, um, you all know I'm single. <laughs> <laughs> y'all know I ain't married. I ain't got no kids. So what happened? What's you, huh? I prayed. I read his word. I, I asked him, God, show me your will and let it be done so. And, I, and as I grew older and more mature, and I, in my faith, I realized what I was asking for was not his will. I was asking for his vision. I was asking for his divination. Do you guys know what divination means? Divination means that, um, most people know this well, you know, if you, you talk to a shaman, oh, nah, huh? you, can, you can ask someone like, can you tell me if this person's gonna be like this? In your dreams, what do these dreams mean? Oh, um, your uncle had this dream so don't do this in your life because something bad will happen to you, right? In, in, um, in the land of America, in Mikatea, you know, they'll do um, terracotta cards, um, glass globes, right, to see the future. And they'll say, what is my future? What is my future? Why do we ask that? Because instead of saying, I want to have faith in God, I want to say, God, I cannot proceed in my life until you tell me, everything that's going to happen next. We're not asking for God's will. We're asking for a cheat. We're asking for a way to skip the hardships in our lives. 
We're trying to ask God to say, hey God, I will not live a life with you unless you tell me each and every way I have to live it, everywhere I should go, exactly how it should be, how my life will end up, the money I will make, the career I will have. That's not God's will. You're asking to see the future. And it's no wonder why that all of us are waiting. All of us are lost. All of us are sad and saying, I don't know what I should do next. I, I don't know if I should go to school here. I've been asking for God to just tell me if I should go to school here, if I should pick this job. And I'm doing this because this is a problem I've seen. And I've been here for five months, which is not long. But I already know this is a major issue with all of us, myself included. I'll tell you this. If anyone in this church thinks they are above this, you prove my point, that you are a pattern of this world. And if any of you think that it shouldn't matter, then I fear for your life and your future. And I say that with love and with care, not out of spite or out of pride, because this, this matters. This is something important. So we know those things are daily living, which is so sad to think that it's not become our routine, is the patterns of the world. It says in verse 1 that we ought to be holy and pleasing to God as sacrifices. And it is until we reach this point in our lives of saying, hey, I need to be like this standard. I should try to aim and be holy, pure, not immoral. That the next step can begin, which is a renewed mind. And until you have a renewed mind, once again, God's will is not visible to you, nor does it matter. So we need to know what a renewed mind is. And having a renewed mind is really complicated, um, but I'm like, the easiest way to explain it is through literal examples. So um, I want us to think about not who we think God is, but who we recognize God as. And I'm gonna say it one more time. We need to recognize God for who he is, but not who we think he is. Uh, and with that example, can I have, yeah, my nephew. Okay, so y'all, if y'all don't know, I love kids. I can't wait to be a dad. And this is, he's the cream of the crop. He's my nephew. His name is Eli. He is the cutest little boy. This is his first day at school. And he is extremely sweet. And not that I don't love all my other nephews and nieces. I didn't use them in the sermon, I know. 